Good morning and welcome to historic Trinity Cathedral in the heart of downtown San Jose. We are so happy to have you with us this Sunday morning and we will also be happy to have you with us si prefiere hacer su adoración en español. We offer a Spanish service también a las doce y media, also at 12.30 in Spanish. But for now, what we want you to know is that whatever brings you here, whatever burdens you're carrying, whatever hopes you have, you are absolutely welcome because all are welcome at God's table here at Trinity Episcopal Cathedral. My name is Julia McCray Goldsmith and it is my pleasure, along with my colleagues, to welcome you to the worship of God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are, all open, hearts are open, all desires, all desires known, known, and from you no secrets, you know, secrets are, are, hid. are hid. Cleanse the thoughts, Cleanse the of, our thoughts hearts of our hearts by the inspiration, by the inspiration of, your Holy, of Spirit, your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly, we may perfectly, love, perfectly you love you and worthily and magnify, worthily magnify your, your, holy your holy name through Christ, through Christ our, Lord. our Lord. Amen. Amen. Angels we have heard on high singing sweetly through the night, and the mountains in reply echoing their brave delight. Lo, in anxious is there. 
Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why these songs of happy cheer? What great brightness did you see? What glad tidings did you hear? Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. to Bethlehem and see him whose birth the angels sing. Come adore on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was a morning the very first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice
of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf, and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire, the voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as King forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. The voice of the Lord is a Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John the Baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. It is so good to be back with you. Over the holidays, my husband John and I spent a few days in Cambria on the central coast. We fell in love anew with the sparkling sand and rugged beaches and windswept bluffs, which is generally excitement enough for we inland residents. But it happened that we were in San Simeon just in time for the whelping season at the Piedras Blancas elephant seal rookery. 
So the protected beaches were crowded with these quite plump seal mothers bonding with their new pups, all of them jealously guarded by huge bull seals bellowing at each other over their harems. I had no idea there was so much drama at the waterfront, but it's not like the Bible didn't tell me so, huh? The Bible tells me that life is created and created anew where water and dry land meet. In the beginning, the priestly writer of Genesis said, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the waters. Now, while that story doesn't tell us much about the physics of God's creation, it does speak volumes about the meaning of it. The earth went from waterly formlessness to generative form under the tender caress of the Holy Spirit, which is another way to translate wind from God. So this morning, this morning we find Jesus meeting the Spirit again at the waterfront of his own river baptism, which opens up the very heavens as the evangelist reports it, yet another waterfront drama presided over by the Spirit. Now, commentators over the ages have argued the meaning of sinless Jesus' participation in a ritual that John understood as an act of repentance. The best theological answer, as far as I'm concerned, is that Jesus' baptism was his immersion into God's good creation and the complexity of the human condition, which God affirmed and blessed and called good. It was his choice, Jesus' choice, to join us just as we are, made right there at the riverbank at the moment that Jesus stepped in. There's no element that better represents, in fact, is integral to the human condition than water. Science and theology equally bear witness to it. Our sacred stories begin with the Spirit of God sweeping over the waters. The the book of Revelation ends with a description of the river of the water of light, bright as crystal and and flowing from the throne of God. And in between, water fairly leaps off the pages of our scriptures, cleansing, healing, slaking the thirst of a desert people. These stories would have been well known to Jesus and John, but so would the intimate relationship of human embodiment and water. Recall that at their very first meeting, when John leapt in his mother's womb at the presence of a very pregnant Mary, That occurred when both of them were immersed in amniotic waters. From conception, our individual and communal survival is mediated through water. Our own bodies are 60% water, 70% of the earth is covered by water, but the sheer volume of water we live amidst does not make it invulnerable, We are fully capable of contaminating the water that we need for life and of destroying the sanctity of that which God swept over in God's spirit and called good. Water is necessary. Water is vulnerable. And water is also dangerous. Our scriptures remind us of that in stories of the flood and Jonah and the Red Sea crossing, and getting through rough water may only be the beginning of a risky journey, which Mark's narrative makes plain when Jesus goes directly from the Jordan into the desert of his temptation. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, says the verse that follows today's lesson. Sometimes 
the only way through risk is to immerse ourselves in it. And there's no point in fighting the wave, literally or symbolically. Water will find its own level. We see the fruits of hydrodynamics in the dramatic reshaping of landscape that can occur when water interacts with geology. I think of phenomena like the Grand Canyon, but you know, we could say the same of our own dynamic coastline. And baptism, the sacramental interaction of water and spirit, it manifests a similar power in us. When we renounce that which corrupts and destroys God's good creation, we conform ourselves to Jesus Christ. To be and to act in the likeness of God, whose creative power is manifested through water, from birth, in baptism, from creation to revelation. Martin Luther once said, Baptism is a once-in-a-lifetime experience that takes our entire lives to fulfill. And if we're honest with each other, we really do have to confess that it's sometimes a kind of a messy fulfillment. If we're really doing the work of renouncing things that our culture affirms and affirming things that our culture denies, our baptismal identities will be no less powerful than waves crashing into the rocky coast at San Simeon. To strive for justice and peace among all people, respect the dignity of every human being, as our baptismal covenant insists of us, that will bring us into conflict with people who would marginalize and exploit others. But like water, we too, as baptized people, will find our level. <laughs> Even if we ourselves move more at the pace of the Guadalupe River than, for example, the, the wave-shaped um, wave coast of Central California, our baptism will get us to where we need to be. And that is why we gather on days like today to remember our own baptisms. We need to remind each other, we need to be reminded that while our baptismal identity is our deepest truth, it is also hard. Thankfully, we're not alone when we accept the risk and the reward of baptism. And we know that Jesus himself has done it before us. He stood at the river's edge, and he chose us. And as baptized people, we too have the challenge and the privilege of re-entering those symbolic waters every day with every decision we make to follow Christ in small and large ways. By God's gracious design, we ourselves birthed and baptized in water, are sufficient to cover the world in a sea of goodness and compassion, with God's help, of course. And that's why we say the creeds every Sunday and reaffirm our vows at every baptism, because each and every time we say, I will, I will, I will, to our baptismal promises, Water meets all that is parched or brittle within us, and creation happens anew. Amen. Happy Sunday, everyone, and Happy New Year. It's good to be back to share some more stories. And this week, we have a particularly special story where we talk about Jesus being baptized in the River Jordan. So Jesus was baptized by his cousin John, and 
the story starts out with a question that I think a lot of us have always had of, well, why was Jesus baptized? And John had that question for Jesus as well. He said, if anything, Jesus, you should be baptizing me. But Jesus said, no, no, and he was lowered into the water, and as he came out, the heavens split apart, and a voice came down saying, this is my son, in him I am very pleased. And Jesus was a special guy, and Jesus' baptism was certainly a special thing, but I'd argue that the baptisms that we take part in are in many ways the same. When Jesus was baptized, he he was baptized in the name of God, and it was the moment that he became the king that we add Christ onto the end of Jesus. And he made a commitment to us to, to lead us, to be our Messiah, to show us a new way of being together and being in the world. But similarly, when we're baptized, we make a commitment to be a part of church, and we make a commitment to each other that we'll support each other in growing as Christians and growing as people. In so many ways, the, the charge that Jesus took on being baptized is the charge that we take on being baptized. So this week, we can think about what this, this sacrament of baptism means. We can ask our parents, was I baptized? What was it like? Who was there? What was said? And we'll have another story next week, maybe a little less wet. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and the needs of others. 
O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And in whatever way, in whatever community you might find yourself as you're watching online, I invite you to share with each other a sign of God's peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. And now, as our Savior has taught us, we are called to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
with the faithful of your church who trust the Holy Eucharist to be your body and blood given for us, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We present to you our souls and bodies with the earnest wish that we may always be united to you. And since we cannot receive you sacramentally, we beseech you spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace with all the love of our souls. Let nothing ever separate you from us. May we live in you and may you live in us, both in this life and in the life to come. Amen. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.